Inside Mercer Basketball with Coach Bob Hoffman and your host, Rick Cameron, brought to you by Wild Wing Cafe. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Wild Wing Cafe as we talk inside Mercer Basketball with Mercer Head Men's Basketball Coach Bob Hoffman. Well, Coach, uh, another swing down into the Florida area. Uh, did you realize that 75 is our magic number? We played the last three games and one scoring 75 points. Well, I don't know. I didn't know that, but it's good to know that. It was a great, uh, both those nights were amazing how our guys fought, worked hard, did things together to get it done. Every possession mattered against good, two good teams on the road. They both uh, schools had great crowds. Uh, I'd like for us to get 75 again on Saturday night at home this uh, Saturday at 4.30. It'd be fun to be able to do that again on Monday night. So we're building momentum. Uh, those were two more great wins for our team and our program. Let's go back, Coach, and break them down a game at a time. It's always tough. Number one, as you pointed out on the road. Number two, you're playing someone the second time, which means a lot of scouting by the coaches, a lot of time in the uh, room scouting the other team. But uh, Jake Gollin sitting out here with some of his teammates got you off to a great start Saturday. Jake had the first nine points of the game. Well, I, I, we would have liked to have scripted it that way, but uh, it just worked out. He hit some big shots. The guys found him. We were, we were off and running. He hit tough shots, and then he hit some open shots. So uh, as we move forward in that game, those were big momentum plays to get started on the right foot. When you're on the road, you can't get a big hole. Uh, it's re really hard to come back from if you don't start well on offense, and we were able to do that through him that night. Now, one thing we talk about, Coach, is not only the team improving, but each individual getting better. There's another guy out in the crowd tonight that just continues to get better. He has since he arrived as a freshman last year. I've mentioned to you post-game, Bud Thomas had a quiet 19 points. Tell us about his effort. Well, I mean, he was everywhere. We posted him up. Uh, he, got, he made play after play, but our guys found him. We executed some offensive sets where he was on the block. He's a guard, so... For him to get to the post, that's you know he feels really comfortable there. We found some plays that worked well for him, and in that game we kept going back to him. In fact, he got uh, one of their better players in foul trouble, which helped us in the first half get some separation when we needed it. And uh, he continues to develop at a high level. All right, coach, that get, kept the uh, winning streak alive, and we uh, recorded our 16th win of the season. Then the bus trip down to Fort Myers, beautiful Fort Myers. Temperature 75 degrees outside, and the temperature was hot on the inside of that gym as well. Well, uh, Andy's done a great job. That he's a, been an assistant at Florida State. Just got that job. Florida Gulf Coast had some tremendous uh, opportunities to win some big games on the road. They got beat at Nebraska by one. Uh, Texas Christian beat them by one. Uh, they've been playing well. They, they're fourth in the league right now. They were six and four going into that game. And the thing I was amazed about, they've really helped uh, him with crowds. The women have been tr tremendous, fantastic over the last few years. But they had close to 3,000 people there that night. And as warm and, and beautiful as was, that's hard to get a good crowd yeah. in, in that kind of climate. So. Yeah, it, it was fun to be able to get it done together that night against a very athletic team. Coach, I mentioned to you pregame that Sherwood Brown, who did not play for Florida Gulf Coast the first time, Langston Hall did not score the first time. Mentioned to you those two guys might have an impact on the game. I guess I got lucky on that because they really did. Those two guys rose to the top. Well, Langston had 20, and uh, I don't know if you'd say it was a quiet 20. He was hitting some threes. But when we got the separation in the second half, it was about an eight minute period where we got to the lane, we made kickouts, we made extra shots, we got stops. When, you, when you're able to do that over a course of a stretch of time period that we were able to do that in the second half, I mean, you can win a lot of games. And that's really been the MO of this team throughout, whether it's winning at Georgia Tech like we were able to do, getting close at Georgia, being, almost having a chance to beat Seton Hall on the road in yeah. overtime. Those are the things you've got to do over and over again to have a tremendous season and have a big time stretch in a game to get some wins. And that, that, that really made, was the difference in that game. And in the second half, even when you got the 18 point lead, it didn't feel like an 18 point lead. And the Florida Gulf Coast credit, they cut it to seven. Your guys had to persevere once again. Well, uh, we took Langston out. Uh, Kevin got hurt, uh, hurt his eye, got poked in the eye. It was a, uh, didn't get fouled or anything. 
just got hit pretty hard. Yeah. Went to the ground hard, but uh, he was in the hospital, didn't get fouled. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, our guys, we took lanes now because we were up 18, thought we could rest him a little bit. Yeah. We knew they were going to press us the rest of the way. And uh, our guys handled the pressure. They, they cut it back and hit some big shots. But at the end of the day, we were able to persevere and get it done uh, through hitting some free throws and making some great decisions on defense and offense. All right, six wins in a row, 17 wins for the season. We're going to talk about more on Inside Mercer Basketball in just a minute. In fact, we're going to campus now and talk with Gary Geyer, the uh, Mercer women's golf coach. We'll be back with more Inside Mercer Basketball here at Wild Wing Cafe in Macon, Georgia. Yeah, baby. the game plan rush into the wild wing cafe and tackle one of our new steakhouse burgers 100 percent angus 100 percent great it's an all-star lineup that can win you tickets to the biggest games of the year where as a business owner you need to choose the financial direction that's best for you to find a clear path to growth and success. At bb and we support businesses of all sizes with personal service and advice. Sharing the sound financial knowledge we've gained over more than 140 years so you can move ahead with confidence. Talk to us today about your business goals. bb and sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. I have purchased uh, five Jeeps here at Five Star and my sister-in-law from Florida actually came up and purchased a uh, Jeep here. The way you're treated, the uh, uh, satisfaction, the service, just the overall good experience. And, you know, for me to come back that many times speaks for itself. We're back with Inside Mercer Basketball, back on campus here at Mercer University, talking with Gary Geyer, the head coach of the women's golf program. Coach, one thing I've always wanted to ask a college golf coach, now the other coaches, they prepare their athletes for the other team. In your case, you've got to prepare your players to compete against other college players, but you've got the course to contend with as well. How does that work into your overall scheme of preparing your golfers to go out and, and play in a match? Well, you know, you can prepare, you can, uh, prepare each tournament the same. So, you know, basically each girl has the, you know, certain things they look for in their game to get it really ready to play. They're not really worried about who they're playing because uh, we've, we've played some of the top teams in the country and we've played teams less. And so you have to prepare the same for everybody. And it is. The course is what you're out there competing against. Yeah. You're just trying to peat, you know, compete against old man par. If, yeah. If we shoot par every time and we prepare the way to, to get where we can do that, we'll be all right. Coach, you've uh, been very successful here, been here since 2007, I believe. The Eden yeah. Peach Tournament has become a, a very successful tournament. Tell us about uh, that involvement with your program with that local tournament. Well, we started that the first year we were here, and we had it at Idle Hour the first couple of years, and we had some really big top teams come in, Georgia, Florida, and Florida State, and we, we always did really, really well. And then we moved it to Oakview Golf Course the last two years, and we've uh, kind of had that as a, a tournament where all the teams in Georgia are involved. It's uh -huh. more of a, a in-state competition where all the – it's really a place to showcase the teams in Georgia. We get a lot of junior golfers come in. They get to see all the different teams in Georgia. And uh, Oakview is one of our home courses, uh -huh. so uh -huh. we play very well yeah. there. And and we've won it the last couple of years, so we've done really well there. Yeah. It's now, Coach, really well. I know you, like the other coaches here at Mercer, stress academics. You've had three academic All-Americans the last two years. I know you're very proud of how yeah. your ladies succeed in the classroom as well. They do great. It's really important uh, what we do with uh, academics. When I'm recruiting, it starts there as I look at them and say, okay, your dad is – golf, your mom is academics, you love mm. them both the same, so right. we really focus on academics. Yeah. We do really well yep. there. We, we have a, each week they come to me and I'll look exactly what they went through the past week so I know exactly what they do. Yep. Just stay on top of it. Now let's talk about your players. Uh, give mm -hmm. us an overview of your team this year and who you're looking forward to of providing uh, leadership and, and performing for you this year. 
Okay, uh, Mary Alice Murphy, she's a sophomore. She's playing very, very well. She was our low medalist qualifier, and she's just really, really consistent. She's mentally tough, not much uh, phases her. Uh, she's pretty what I can count on her pretty consistently. Uh -huh. Then we got Lacey Fears, the other sophomore. Uh, she's solid too. She's really has some great rounds. Uh, this girl can really go low. I look for her to really get, this spring is really gonna be a great time for her to really stand out. Uh -huh. So those two are really good. Yep. And then uh, the next two, I have uh, a freshman, Sarah Louie Brown. She's come in, she's just taken charge. She's a very passionate person. She's scoring very well. I uh, see a big improvement with her. And then the fourth uh, is Aureli Weariath. She's a junior. Aureli's done a great job. She's just consistent and great, great uh, disposition. D nothing rattles her. She, she's real consistent. Yep. Now the, the fifth, uh, fifth and sixth players are really fighting for that spot. Yep. Caitlin Marin and Jessica Arthur are back and forth. And so I'm really waiting for one of them to really take charge and show me who is going to be that fifth person and, and you know because in tournaments we play five count four so I really need somebody to come up and take charge that fifth position. Now let's talk about your schedule and the tournament you'll be mm -hmm. involved in. Give us a couple of the highlights of some of those that you look forward to. Well this weekend we play at Jacksonville. A great tournament down there. There are five conference teams in this tournament so we get a good idea of how we're going to do in the conference championship. Uh, then we go to Kiowa. That's always a great yep. tournament. There's about 40 teams in that tournament. Terrible environment over there. Just horrible. <laughs> it's just a tough place to play. We get to stay in a hotel, you know, a condo on the beach. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and that there are some perks to this job. And yes. it's, it's really nice. But uh, it's the largest women's collegiate tournament. Uh, there's 40 teams. Then we go. Uh, we play in Tampa. Uh, we have a tournament down there. Then we go to the conference championship, which is the most important. You win the conference championship, yeah. you go to the NCAA. All right, That's final, cool. final question, Coach. I always like cool. to ask, what do you enjoy most about coaching uh, on the college level, these ladies? Well, you know, I think the most important thing I like is to make a difference. And I see these girls come in, and they have so much potential to really work with them, to motivate them, show them that life's not always so easy, that you have to work for what you go after. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're, we work out a lot. We're very disciplined. We, we, we do a lot of things that most teams don't do. But we're going to – I'm going to show them that it's tough out there, but if they want it bad enough, they can be successful. And that's what I love when they leave and I see them get married. And then, you know, they, they come back and say, Coach, you know, you really did make a difference. And that's what that's what it's all about. Absolutely. All that's right. It. Gary Geyer, women's golf coach, thanks for joining us today. Rick, we thanks. appreciate it very much. All right, let's hey, go back to the Wild Wing Cafe and more Inside Mercer Basketball. I was looking through the paper and I saw a really good ad from Five Star Ford in Warner Robins. So when I went, I was actually really picky and my salesperson worked with me until I finally found the truck that I liked and it was a black Ford. 2011 F-150 XLT Super Crew. I mean, it actually has an EcoBoost, so it's a little bit better on gas, and I love it. I would definitely recommend Five Star to all my friends. the game plan rush into the wild wing cafe and tackle one of our new steakhouse burgers 100 percent angus 100 percent great it's an all-star lineup that can win you tickets to the biggest games of the year where as a business owner you need to choose the financial direction that's best for you to find a clear path to growth and success. At bb and we support businesses of all sizes with personal service and advice. Sharing the sound financial knowledge we've gained over more than 140 years so you can move ahead with confidence. Talk to us today about your business goals. bb and sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. We're back at Wild Wing Cafe, Macon, Georgia. Our guest this evening, Daniel Corsi, 6'11", post player from Savannah, yeah. Georgia. Daniel, we've got a lot of uh, younger guys that come to games. They look at you and Monty Brown and say, look at those big dudes. I'd love to be tall like that. At what point in your career growing up did you elevate among the other players on the basketball court? Oh, well, mainly I really didn't. I was kind of short. Up until about the fourth grade. Yeah. Um, and then. I grew about a foot that summer, and that was when I actually started being 
do on top of the rail. So. Daniel, as we uh, go around from gym to gym, arena to arena, one of the first things that uh, the other schools are actually asking us, SIDs and so forth, Daniel Corsi, is he as much improved as what we've heard? Obviously, you and several of your teammates have improved. Tell us about the work that you put in since your first year to become the player that you have this season. Uh, well, this offseason was huge. Uh, the coaches, every single day, just pounded it into us and pounded moves. And they never let up. And we lifted a lot. And a lot, a lot of that, I feel like. A lot of improvement. Yeah, I, I think another thing that happened for uh, Daniel was this summer, uh, he had a lot of things happen. They worked out hard. He went on a trip with a team, yep. a mission trip. I know Jake spent some time, they spent time in the gym, and he worked himself out besides what happened in the spring, and he, he made a serious improvement over the summer. Talk about a little bit about that, how that came about. All the Maybe even what you guys did this summer and then how you went on that trip and where you went, what y'all, what you guys got, were able to do. Um, well, to start with, I don't know, just the summer with working out with the team. Um, our summer workout, we just work out a lot, and then we play pickup. And uh, Jake would stay on us to play intense and play game like. Yeah. And um, playing like that every single day, it you know it helps you get a lot more confident in your moves and um, that's what you're doing out on the court, feel for the game. Yeah. And um. Yeah, then between um, the last, second semester, summer semester, and uh, first semester, I made a trip to the league there for about eight or nine days. And uh, we played, I think, four or five games against the team, the local people there, and uh, went on, like, missionary work and stuff like that. And uh, that was awesome. That was of course, I averaged a double-double in all those games. Yeah. Right. Big yeah. time. Yeah. Double. Yeah. He was a double double man this summer. And and this, they were very good. So. And the, they weren't that good. <laughs> Obviously, they're good in Division One basketball. You found yeah. out, Daniel. You're leading the conference in block shots. You're leading the conference in field goal percentage. There's that two areas you feel like, with the extra work, has helped your game both offensively and defensively. Um, I don't know. Block shots mainly. You have to have but I can't floor. believe it. Really it's oh! Nice. oh. To this season remarkable year still a lot of opportunities to go but what game maybe has been more meaningful to you once we walked off the court with a W? Um, probably the most meaningful game was the Georgia Tech game. Yeah. Um, that game was, I don't know, growing up and watching Georgia Tech play, uh, I like honestly never thought that we would be able to beat them. And Are you serious? I did, but I did think that we could, <laughs> but it, it was weird. It was just like, Are you hearing this guys over here? <laughs> He said, he said he didn't know we could beat yeah. Georgia Tech. We could. And I was playing against Georgia Tech. And, so. Yeah, well, he had a great big play at the end of that game. Obviously, uh, Daniel, Mercer known as an academic institution. I know that you take your academics very seriously, but uh, looking long range, what do you hope to do uh, later on in life? Um, well, the coaches give me a hard time all the time about uh, Who is? changing my major. Coach Wright? Changing Coach your major. Changing my major. Yeah, say, say a couple of the classes you're in right now. I can't even pronounce them. I'm in Organic Chemistry 2. Organic Chemistry 2. Organic Chemistry. You know what that is, Rick? Uh, I can't spell it, but I can <laughs> say it. <laughs> it's not the easiest spot there. Are, but but um, I don't know. Something in the medical field probably. Um, I haven't really thought about, thought about it too much. Yeah. Something in that area. So I'll think about that when I'm graduating. You've got a brother and a sister that uh, come to Mercer as well. Tell us what's that like for three courses to be at Mercer. Oh, uh, pretty weird actually. Well, no, it's nice. It's a uh, share a car. If I need anything from them or if I need help, they're always there to help me. Oh, that's nice. All right, Daniel. From a player's perspective, we've got seven games to go. What's the uh, ultimate goal that this team can accomplish coming down the stretch? Win out. And Win out. Win the Eastern Conference. That's ten more straight. Okay, Daniel, thanks for joining us here this evening on Inside Mercer Basketball. We look forward to uh, you and your teammates running the table the rest of the regular season.
Daniel Corsi, Savannah, you, Georgia, Daniel. joining us here at Wild Wing Cafe. We'll be back with more Inside Mercer Basketball in just a moment. Yeah, baby. As a business owner, you need to choose the financial direction that's best for you to find a clear path to growth and success. At bb and we support businesses of all sizes with personal service and advice, sharing the sound financial knowledge we've gained over more than 140 years so you can move ahead with confidence. Talk to us today about your business goals. bb and sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. Hi, I'm Bob Hoffman, head men's basketball coach at Mercer University. And we got a great opportunity for your son to come to basketball camp and learn how to play the game at a high level. June 11th through the 14th and June 24th through the 27th is an overnight camp. And you can find out more information at BobHoffmanHoops.com or 478-301-5211. If you want to learn how to become a great player, call us or check us out on the web. Go Bears! service department is out of sight. You can pull in the, the uh, garage over there and they will meet you before you cut the engine off. They know you by name. How can I help you, Mr. Ross? I can't, you know, get that kind of service no place else but here at Five Star. All of my friends, I always tell them what good service you get at Five Star. I love to talk and I like to tell the truth. the game plan rush into the wild wing cafe and tackle one of our new steakhouse burgers 100 percent angus 100 percent great it's an all-star lineup that can win you tickets to the biggest games of the year where back at wild wing cafe in macon georgia we're talking inside mercer basketball with bob hoffman Coach, uh, 17 wins, six wins, consecutive wins in the conference. Obviously, as you point out before each game, you've got to take them one at a time. There's a lot of basketball yet to be played, but as I constantly ask you and remind you, it sure is a lot of fun when you're tied up there at the top. Well, our guys have done a tremendous job of focusing not only with the team at hand that we got to conquer, get, we got to get better at, but they're focusing on those possessions that make a difference. And, uh, I, I think when you look at our team and see what they've been able to accomplish, all you have to do is look at our assistant coaches, look at our players, and then a day-to-day -day, uh, workout schedule that they've been through. I mean, we're getting better every day. We're, we're not still the best team we can be. I don't think we've, yeah. we reach reached that at all. And I'm excited about seeing where we are four weeks from now when we get to the conference tournament. I, I'm juiced about yeah. the six games we won in a row, but I'm even more excited about what this team can accomplish and what the ceiling of where we can go in the next four weeks. Coach, it's also got to be exciting as you see individual players getting better and contributing. Uh, the game this past weekend, Chris Smith hit two huge threes, scored 10 points in the game. Uh, you have players that constantly step up, whether it be Travis Smith, Kevin Canaveri, you can count on just about everyone that enters a, any particular game. Yeah, I mean, all those guys have made those plays. Last time we played USC Upstate, Paul Larson had a big game. So there's been all kinds of guys have, have stepped into their roles, understand what they're doing, and that's why this team is achieving at the level they're achieving at right now. I mean, I know they still, when you, you know, you, I mean, you want to play all the time. Yep. I mean, that, you recruit guys, and you want to play, and you want them to want to play, but at the end of the day, what's made us special this year is the ability for them to be excited about each other's success, yeah. no matter what it means about them getting minutes or not. And that's what excites me every day and gets me fired up about wanting to be in practice with these guys, their selflessness of getting it done has been at a high, high level. All right, Coach, if you could gather the entire Mercer team and all of the Mercer fans together and address what's the most important thing that this team and the Mercer fans need to rally around and be successful to win the majority of the games, to get to the conference tournament, to win the conference tournament, what would be your top priority? Well, I mean, it's what we talk about all the time with our guys, is we have to have the most energy. And to have the most energy, you gotta have the, you gotta have the stands full, you gotta have people going crazy, you gotta have a home court advantage because 
we got four home games left, three on the road, and every game matters. Every possession matters. One possession could be the difference of winning a conference championship or not. And after you've worked so hard to get to the point we're at right now, I tell our guys, they may have a, a really good player. They may have a couple good players. They may have three good players. They may have three guys better than some of our guys. But there is no way that they're going to have a better team than us. There's no way they're going to have more energy than us. There's no way they're going to have more enthusiasm for getting it done, no matter if we're on the road or at home. And that's what we've hung our hat on, and that's why we've been successful, and that's what we've got to continue to do. We can't rest and say, hey, you know, we're this, we're that, we're here. We won nine games. We're 9-2. and two, We're 17-7. We're getting votes in mid-major poll. We're this in the RPI. You can't, you can't worry about all that. You've got to make sure you're focused on being excited and having the energy and enthusiasm to continue to play the defense and offense that we have at this point at uh, every game out. Coach, I felt like after the East Tennessee State game, the last game that we did lose, that was the message you portrayed to the players. Let's get back to the goals and objectives and the complete game effort that we were giving. And, and, and they rallied behind that and have done that thus far. No, they have because, I mean, there's going to be highs and lows in every game. And it's going to be the team that's most consistent throughout the course of that game and the most resilient. And that's the things we talked about after we lost that game. We've got to be resilient. We've got to bounce back. We've got to get back to the form we were at and finish strong. And, and that's what we're doing right now, and that's what we've got to do the rest of the way for us to continue this special season that we're having. Now, finally, finally this evening, Coach, we're into February now, the tournament just a few days away. For those that may not be familiar with Atlantic Sun, the, the conference tournament once again at our place at the end of the month, how exciting is that for Mercer to once again be the host school and the host team for this tournament and the opportunities it's going to give your basketball team? Yeah, well, I mean, lot, almost every game is going to be on national TV. Uh, Comcast will be carrying some, the network we're on. ESPN will be carrying the championship game, uh, some of the semifinals games. So the, the message is, I mean, how could you not want to be a part of something that people are going to be talking about for a long time? And that's a conference championship, an opportunity to be a part of history. And it's right here in middle Georgia. We're the only Division I institution in middle Georgia. And we need everybody out there to get with us, get on board now. Don't wait till the conference tournament get to those games and let's finish this thing strong. Let's find a way to win a championship. All right, Coach, it's been a lot of fun and a lot of fun yet to be had following Mercer basketball. Thanks for joining us this evening. We look forward to seeing you again next week on Inside Mercer Basketball with Head Coach Bob Hoffman. Thanks.